Hello, this is Bruno Pelletier-Backer, and uh, we are moving on today with our exploration of those quartal voicings. So what we saw in a previous video was this particular grit, which is a four-note chord, and uh, we, um, well, we were calling this a quartal voicing because all the notes were stacked up in perfect fourths. What we're going to do today is start by reducing this four note chord into a three note chord. So simply I'm going to look at the top three notes instead of those four notes. I'm just going to look at the top three notes. And we kind of hinted at that last time, uh, particularly when we were in the middle strings, when I was showing you this voicing, for instance. So I'm thinking G major here. So G major. 7th with the Lydian sound or G6-9, which is what we have here. So what I was mentioning is if I'm using the voicing this low with this bass note, it gets a bit muddy. So I was hinting at the fact that we could only focus on the top three notes of this voicing. But now we're going to do that with all of the voicings. So we're going to have this, this. So we remember we have two voicings that were moving like this, and then in the middle we have this. So what I'm thinking of here is the top notes of those chords. I have a G, an A, and then on the second string, D and E, right? And that almost sounds like a pentatonic scale, a G major pentatonic scale, which would be G, A, B, D. So if I continue on the top string, and if I harmonize all those notes, the five notes now, the pentatonic scale, with my three note grip, this is where I'm getting. So I have five different grips, and I'm hearing G as a, as a root here. So all those voicings, I'm going to use them uh, for some sort of a G major chord. So G, like I said, G major 7th, G Lydian, G 6 9, you know, every time I have this, this type of major chord, that's what I can do now. So I have G on top, A on top, B on top, D on top, here I can grab the, the, the root here on the 5th string. And then now E on top, and then here's the, the G again. Okay, so that's really simple. I don't have to modify the voicing as I move on. I just simply target the note I want on top and just grab my chord. And the same thing will happen with the middle strings. So I have D on top. Top, G on top, A on top, B on top, D. Right. So all these voicings, in fact, they're the same, the same voicings that I had on the uh, on the top three strings, but now moved on into the middle of my uh, my strings. So now I'm using strings two, three, and four. for some sort of G major. Now where it gets interesting is when we bounce back and forth between um, the two top strings. So the, I have D on top, E on top, and G on top, A on top. So that's what I would um, invite you to, to practice. Just look at a particular area and move your grip um, up to the next note in your pentatonic scale. So here, this is what happened. I'm, I'm moving on between these two voicings, and I go back down and then target the top note on the first string, and then go up to the next available voicing, still following the notes of the, the G pentatonic. Let me do this 
this with the next two voicings. So I'm gonna have E on top and, and then G here. So pa way and then A, B. Okay, so E, G, A, B. So you move back and forth. Now the next one's gonna be uh, G to A. So G, A on these strings and then B and D. If you're used to hearing the sound of the major pentatonic, you will automatically hear those notes. The next set is going to be A, B, D, E. And we kind of saw that last time because I was using this voicing here for the G. So we we uh, we see the the tonic here of the, the well, tonic of the key or root of the chord that we're looking at. So I have A on top again, B, D, and E. And the next set is going to be B to D and then E to G. And if I go up one more, then I'm running into the same situation that I have done an octave, uh, D, E, G, A, which is what I had here. Okay, so this is really important because when you, when you comp or harmonize a, a melody, you don't need to go up and down the fretboard necessarily. You can stay in a certain area and uh, get all the notes of your pentatonic. So first, you, you're definitely going to do that between those two string sets, but actually you could um, you could continue because here you're going to have another chordal voicing. So you have B on top. I'm using now strings of three, four, five, and then E, and we could even go using. So here I'm using those three strings, those three strings. It gets it gets very muddy here. I, I've seldom do that. Um, I might do two strings. Same thing with this. Here back to three. But you notice what happens. I'm just moving on simply um, two voicings per string. Or you know, again, I'm targeting the top notes of my voicings, not not so much the the lower notes. So here I have A, G on top, E on top. D on top, B on top, so let's say I'm going to use just the top two strings of this instead of this if I'm afraid that it gets a bit muddy. So here I have E on top, here I'm going to have D on top, very muddy there, right? And then uh, B. Again, the bottom ones, you might as well forget about them for the time being, but I just wanted to show you that those voicings are really helpful all over the place. So you can do those kind of things. So this is for G major, but it's going to work just the same for uh, the relative minor of G major, which would be E minor. So now I could use um, a low E, and then I'm going to hear some kind of E minor uh, voicings. And I'm using exactly the same grips that I was using a second ago with G major, but now I'm hearing E underneath. So that's, uh, that's some kind of... A, some kind of E minor sound, right? Um, so again, I can move up the same way, D on top, E on top, and then G. That's all kinds of um, interesting things that we can do with, uh, with that concept. So you have to know the notes of your pentatonic scale. Now, a nice easy way to think of, uh, of the major pentatonic here 
Um, a nice easy way to think of it is if I'm doing it from G, I'll do it on the big string. So I have G, it starts just like a major scale, right? G, A, B. We would skip the fourth note, the C note in this case. We skip it and go up to the fifth. So the first thing you can, you can train yourself to do is go up one, two, three, and then project to the fifth. So if you have G, right, so one, two, three, and then here's the fifth. And then you just go up a whole step from that fifth, and that's the sixth of your scale. And then you're done. That's the only five notes you have. So let's say we're gonna do this from, uh, from C. So if I have C, I'm thinking of the first three notes, so C, D, E, I project up to the fifth. Here's G, up a whole step from the fifth. Here's my A, and then I'm done. That's my octave, right? So um, that, that's a little different than just memorizing fingerings on the, on the scale because you have to know what notes you're playing. But it's really, a, it's a pretty easy scale to, to, um, to think about. So I'm sure you'll have no problems uh, down the road. And you know, it's a great way to learn your fretboard. It's a great way to learn, to train yourself to, to understand the harmony a little better, uh, build scales on the fly, and, uh, and then of course find, find the notes on the, on the fretboard. So that's gonna be it for today. Next time, I will show you a, um, a way to play through changes. Like you could comp, I'll take, a, I'll take a simple tune and then show you how I can move all those different voicings and, um, and come up with interesting sounds. All right, bye.